Welcome to the Daughter Arise channel. My name is Yvonne and this channel is all about bringing you content about childhood sexual abuse. On this channel I share things to do with my experiences of going through this childhood trauma. I also share news stories and add my thoughts and commentary to them and from time to time when I'm fortunate enough I interview other survivors and their supporters in hopes of raising awareness about this childhood trauma. So if this is the type of content you're looking for don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so that you can be notified of any new uploads and if you do like the content don't forget to hit the thumbs up. So in today's video it's just really a quick review of a documentary I watched at the weekend called Jehovah Witnesses and Me. Now this documentary was by a lady called Rebecca Vardy over here in the UK. She's mostly known for being a Premier League footballer's wife and more recently she was in a civil court case with another footballer's wife her, her name was uh, Colleen Rooney who is the wife of Wayne Rooney and you know there was a whole kind of thing in the newspaper about this kind of messy um, civil um, court case but anyway that's how she came to the public's attention and this documentary is about her experience of going through childhood sexual abuse as a Jehovah Witness so when she was 12 years old um, unfortunately Rebecca was sexually abused by somebody she doesn't say who it is she doesn't you know kind of give a clue as to whether it was a family member or someone in their wider social circle within the Jehovah Witness community but obviously it must have been somebody who is a Jehovah Witness like her because this is what the whole documentary is about and basically she goes back to her old area to try and find out more about the Jehovah Witness organization within the area that she grew up and how it operated because you know it allowed her allegations of sexual abuse to go you know um, unnoticed it allowed her allegation of sexual abuse you know not to be reported through the proper authorities so the documentary for the first half just basically is Rebecca taking us around her local area to places of memory that she had growing up in the Jehovah Witness um, organization and it was quite shocking actually to hear all the rules and regulations and how they manipulate religion in order to get people to comply to what they want. She kind of talks us through all the rules and regulations that she had to live with. Some of the things that she shares is that you know if her life was in danger she wouldn't be allowed to have a blood transfusion another thing they're not allowed to mix with anybody outside of the organization as well because they consider you know people like me and you if you're not a Jehovah's Witness um, unbelievers and worldly and things like that which is kind of strange actually because considering we were all born in the world for them to think that now they're part of this organization that they're better than everybody else is actually quite bizarre but obviously this is how the organization works they see everybody else as the enemy and outsiders but if you are one of them, then basically, you know, you're one of the saved ones, the ones that are going to go to paradise and things like that. So right from the back, my impression was, is that, you know, the kind of setup of the organization with all the rules and regulations and the secrecy and everything else was fertile for childhood sexual abuse to occur. So as the documentary continues, Rebecca tries to speak with certain people within the Jehovah Witness organization and they wouldn't take part in the documentary and gave various reasons for it. Now one of the things that happened is that she left the Jehovah Witness organization and it's common for most people who decide to leave the organization they become excommunicated meaning that they can no longer have any kind of communication with other people they may have made friends with or made family with within the organization. She talks about her relationship with her mother being strained and also as well one of the key things that she mentioned when she was about 11 12 her mum I think was also kind of ostracized from the organization but she didn't understand why and obviously going by their rules and everything else Rebecca kind of suggested it might have been because her mum might have had an affair because obviously they're very black and white in their rules and everything else they have a rule book for everything that they believe and everything and um, you know she guessed that might have been the reason but nobody knows because obviously she doesn't have a relationship with her mum and you know she is just kind of guessing about that. One of the things that kind of was shocking when I looked at it is that the Jehovah Witnesses um, organization 
do have a lot of survivors of childhood sexual abuse. As I just mentioned, the organisation and the way that it is set up to keep everything in-house, they don't believe in getting the police involved in allegations and stuff. The way that it's set up is kind of really kind of ripe for childhood sexual abuse. And one of the things that was really evident throughout this documentary is that when she tried to you know, speak with somebody from um, the organisation, they would release all these statements and the Jehovah Witness organisation speak out both sides of their mouths. They really like to say the right things that they think that people want to hear but in practice they don't actually do that and one of the things that was really highlighted in this documentary is that the independent inquiry into childhood sexual abuse did highlight them as an organization a religious organization that had a problem with childhood sexual abuse now it's very hard for survivors to speak out because of the whole kind of manipulation that goes along with this organisation. They have this warped idea that if there are not two or three witnesses to the actual childhood sexual abuse, then it is not true. Where they've got that from, and this is what I'm saying with them, they twist and manipulate the Bible. And I should be really clear here, the Jehovah Witnesses have their own Bible that they have created for themselves and how I know that is back 22 years ago they used to come and knock my door when I was a single parent they saw that I was by myself and you know obviously thought that I would be quite vulnerable but obviously I'm too strong-minded to fall for their tricks and I remember getting my Bible and comparing it to their Bible and found actually that they had changed the Bible I think it's called New World Translation Bible or something like that but basically what they've done is to take um, some of God's word which says about two or three witnesses gathered in out of context because it was for something else and used it for the fact of if a child or a young person has gone through childhood sexual abuse if there's not two or three witnesses to what has happened then it's not true absolutely bizarre twisted and weird because when we know the history of childhood sexual abuse and the paedophiles and perpetrators of this abuse if you know anything at all, even from the things I've shared on this channel or just know in general, paedophiles never sexually abuse a child in front of anybody else. That completely defeats the whole reason why they would do it. They like the secrecy, they like setting up things without people knowing, they like putting on a front in front of people and then behind closed doors being this predatory monster to the child, which makes it very difficult for the child to come forward and say, this person has done this to me because of how this paedophile presents themselves in other people. And we know that paedophiles gravitate towards organisations, gravitate towards um, different places like religious organizations, um, football coaching kind of establishment, uh, church ministry, anything like that where they can try and slip in undetected. Many years ago, I'm not sure if it's really the case now, because of the safeguarding kind of measures that churches and other places had in, had in place, it used to be very easy for them to set up themselves and come in as a volunteer to do different things with kids and then sexually abuse them. So the fact that this organization is saying, you know, if there's not two or three witnesses to the sexual abuse then it never happened they're absolutely you know bonkers they're absolutely crazy um, and this is what happened when you have an organization which has its own man-made rules with its own kind of man-made leaders they are of themselves and they set up rules and everything to honor themselves and honor man and for the people underneath them because a lot of people that are underneath them unfortunately are looking for something you know they want family maybe they don't have family they join this organization to get a sense of community and family they don't know any better um, so they join this organization and for whatever reason become part of it and then have to deal with all these different rules and regulations that these people have made. How the Jehovah Witness organization is set up is that you can't challenge them in any way shape or form. When I you know I'll just go back to this quickly many years ago as I just said when I challenged them on their doctrine and when they were knocking my door and saying to them you know to, to show me and tell me where it actually says that and they couldn't they went and got their elder to come and challenge me and he came to my house actually and I had the pastor of my church at the time come to my house as well and they couldn't answer the questions. They were kind of shocked because they got more than they bargained for because they didn't expect me to be so strong-minded. And basically that is just how they're set up. 
not to be challenged and if you challenge them they'll try and get somebody higher than themselves to, to challenge you they don't take any authority from police or anything like that they are problematic now whilst Rebecca didn't go into any details of her story about how she came to be abused I just want to say here just because she didn't go into that the fact that she was willing to be brave enough to try and investigate this organization and its policies and the way it's set up in regards to her abuse I don't think that should be something that is taken lightly I think she's really courageous in being able to do that but one of the things she did do in this documentary is to talk to another survivor who bravely shared her story Laura is a child sexual abuse survivor she was eight years old when somebody within the organization not in her immediate family sexually abused her and the way that she talks about the experience about how she was in physical pain how she tried to speak out and how she was ignored and treated by those around her because they just turned a blind eye I thought was absolutely appalling and sickening it was really upsetting to hear what she had gone through and she tried I think three times at different ages to try and tell somebody about what she had gone through one of the things she said is that when it happened to her she immediately thought that she was in the wrong and it was her fault and how many times have I shared on this channel and how many times have we known this to be something that survivors struggle with I did myself and if you've gone through it yourself um, maybe you did as well when the initial abuse happened thinking that it is your fault because of that feeling of guilt and shame that just you know arises from going through this experience anyway she fought for a long time he ended up doing some kind of minimal sentence which was nowhere near what he should have got um, and that was only because she spent years and years you know trying to get justice for what had gone on with her um, eventually she went to the police and from that the police got involved and I think he got like a seven year sentence which with probation um, is nothing and also I think he got 10 years on the child sex offenders register if I can remember clearly at one point she traveled I think two miles to their headquarters and kind of rang on the bell to see if somebody would come down and speak to her because she tried to email them and they said no one was available so she thought she would go down and see if somebody would be willing to speak to her nobody wanted to speak to her in person instead they um, fired off all these kind of fake kind of statements you know um, not answering anything directly she wanted answers to how her abuse was allowed to happen and why she wasn't believed because she did try and speak up and again she was rejected she wasn't believed just like Laura she wasn't believed children who've gone through this within the organization are not believed so Rebecca Vardy for all of her efforts in trying to find out about the organizational structure its policy and procedures you know it how it kind of allowed her sexual abuse to happen and trying to find out if anything had changed within that um, you know wasn't really the success she had hoped it to be but that wasn't for the lack of trying on her part just because the organization is extremely secretive they didn't get involved in anything to do with her on camera and I highly doubt that any recommendations that the independent um, inquiry into childhood sexual abuse have made are going to be taken seriously by this organization because of the way they are you know they're not open to public scrutiny they are a law unto themselves with their um, man-made leaders who lead everything who don't have a relationship with God they don't have any kind of wisdom they have their own man-made wisdom and their little rule books so I don't think anything is going to change within that organization but if you want to watch that documentary as I said it's only 45 minutes long I will leave a link to it in the show notes below but um, yeah it is worth actually a watch because it kind of gives you a little bit of insight into the Jehovah Witness organization but that is it for this video and I will see you on the next one take care